going off that, off the, your med school experiences, what, what are your advices, advice for people that are they're maybe like a third year med student, they're interested in ophthalmology. How do they work that in? Cause maybe I know some places have bigger ophthalmology departments than others. And um, I guess what's your kind of advice for getting that one, getting the exposure. Cause I imagine that's probably one of the biggest steps. And then two, like making that decision that that's, that's kind of where you want to go with your career. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there. The biggest thing is just getting the exposure and, you know, even spending an afternoon or a day in clinic with an ophthalmologist when you can, I think kind of gives you a good insight into, you know, potentially how the special could be or, or how you might like it. Um, I would say one thing is even if you do it and it seems really boring, don't get too discouraged because like I said, a lot of it comes from the exam and looking at the microscope at eyes. Um, so if you don't, you know, if it's a busy attending clinic, a lot of times you don't have the opportunity to look, or even if they have you look, you know, there's not someone there showing you exactly what's going on. So I remember, you know, I was, you know, very interested in ophthalmology, even some of my medical student rotations in ophthalmology was a little bit boring and you kind of just have to, um, you know, try to get out what you can and try to imagine if you were the one actually doing the exam and seeing these things, if you'd enjoy it. Um, and again, also, I know it's, it's tough for, especially with places that maybe don't have as big of an ophthalmology department, but I thought it was really impactful when I was able to go to the operating room, um, not only just to kind of watch the surgeries when they're projected up on the board, but if you have a chance to either scrub in or even just like look through the operating microscope, um, it really brings things into three dimensions. You're able to see the depth and really gives you a greater appreciation for the surgeries. Um, and I don't know if you don't have a home ophthalmology program, a lot of times there'll be a, an ophthalmologist in the area that might have, you know, done medical school or would just be even happy to have someone, you know, tag along in the clinic or in the OR for a day. Um, so I know some students have done that as an option. And then the other thing, you know, if you don't have the program and you think you're interested, um, would it be doing it away? Obviously, you would have to have more than just a little bit of interest, you know, to spend a whole month as a fourth year and to do in a way, but that's, you know, something where you can also gain a lot of experience. Yeah. I guess going off that away thing, and I, I realize COVID may have changed this, but is, is ophthalmology one that in the past people typically did away rotations for, and I guess how has that stayed steady with the, with the COVID situation? And, and do you feel like those are helpful for, you know, eventually either matching in general or matching where you want to match? Yeah. So I, the way I kind of think of it is it's not quite like, I don't know, like neurosurgery or orthopedics, where it's like everyone does a ways and you have to do a ways. Uh, but on the other hand, it's not maybe like, you know, medicine where very few people do a ways. I think it's kind of somewhere in the middle. I know, or I don't, I, I'm pretty sure like Emory kind of tells their students that unless there's a, you know, compelling reason for you to want to go to one place exactly, they kind of discourage a ways just because you don't really know that much about ophthalmology as a medical student. Um, so it's really hard to impress anyone with your knowledge. <laughs> And then it just takes, you know, one time of you somehow rubbing someone the wrong, maybe you're even like you're too excited to be there and one attending is grumpy that day or something. So it's almost easier to kind of mess things up than to, to make a really good impression. Um, but when I was in med school, you know, I went to Ohio State and they were kind of said the same thing, you know, they're like, oh, you don't need to do an away, but if you want to, you know, you should go for it. Um, so I actually ended up doing two aways. Um, I did one actually at Emory and we ended up matching, which was, you know, obviously a great experience. I really, really enjoyed my time. I, I was doing a surgical elective actually. So I was in the OR a ton, working in the Emory wet lab with one of the attendings. It was a really great experience. And I did one in Chicago at, well, as well at UIC. Um, also a great experience. Um, you know, really liked the program, like the residents had a good time. Um, my situation was slightly different because I was couples matching. Um, and trying to do like the pseudos couples match because ophthalmology is an early match with the regular match um, made things a little challenging. So I wanted to, you know, go to some places, get, you know, meet people, meet the program directors, kind of um, have some connections besides just Ohio, um, which ended up working out for me. But I think that's another reason to maybe do in a way if there's a part of the country where you really want to go or a specific program you really want to go. Um, just realizing that it is hard. It's, it's, uh, ophthalmology is a hard rotation as a med student and not the fact that, you know, the hours are hard or the learning is hard. It just, you really don't know that much. Um, and so it sometimes can be hard to make a good impression. That being said, if, you know, you show up on time, you work hard, you act interested, you try to hope when you can, um, you know, those are kind of the things we're looking for. So it's 
not that hard to do those sorts of things, but it's there's just not a lot of room to really shine. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I guess go, going off that, um, maybe could you highlight the major differences since uh, between the, like in the main match that most specialties do in the ophthalmology match or the S I believe it's the SF match is what it's called. SF match. Yeah. yeah. And then I guess maybe some general, I realize we could do a whole episode on this, but maybe your general thoughts on how to navigate that, that match process. Yeah. I think that the biggest difference obviously, and it's kind of unfortunate is that's an early match. So not only is ophthalmology a subspecialty where a lot of places don't get exposed to it. Um, I know like at, at Ohio state, like it, ophthalmology wasn't a required rotation. Um, I don't know about Toledo and I, I know for Emory, they just get like one week of it. And sometimes that might be at the end of their third year. So it's first of all, something that not a lot of people are exposed to. Maybe they learn about it late. And then it's on top of that, it's an early match. You can actually get things rolling a little bit earlier than some of the other, the other specialties. Other than that, you know, it's a different, obviously it's a, it's a different system. So you have to log into SF match and submit everything instead of ERAS. Um, I think other than that, there's not a ton of differences. I mean, the letter recommendation process is slightly different. And there's a lot of people have different opinions on if you should get them your letters from all ophthalmologists or from, you know, a medicine attending or surgery attending you work with or a research mentor or something like that. Um, I think that's kind of just depends on really who you have the best relationships with. I think it's important to have someone at least that can speak to your, you know, interest in the field of ophthalmology and not maybe knowledge in the field of ophthalmology. I also think it's important to have someone who worked with you as a med student, not just shadowing them in clinic and, you know, being a nice guy and being nice to their patients and showing up on time. So they can actually speak to maybe a little more of your work ethic or how you like to think through problems. Um, so probably getting one from, you know, a medicine attending or a surgery attending or somebody you work with closely. And then I think there was three that were required. And that last one, uh, you know, a, a research mentor could be good, especially if it's in ophthalmology or another strong letter from a medicine or surgery or if, you know, you have kind of two mentors in ophthalmology. I think that's fine too. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if there's really any other big differences. I mean, it's kind of a pain just because, especially if there hasn't been someone that you know that applied ophthalmology the year before, just the formatting is slightly different from ERAS. So I remember we'd have all these meetings as a fourth year med student with our Dean of Education talking about going through and how to format ERAS and how to put what goes where and SF match. Um, thankfully, our Ohio State had a you know, fantastic uh, medical education coordinator who was like one of the residency program coordinators that would sit down and walk us through all of it. But I realized not, not everywhere has that. So that can just take some time and it's a, kind of a stressful time. Gotcha. Is, is uh, just closing things out here is, is research like, I mean, because like you said, you know, getting exposure is obviously a, you know, a big step and can even be a hurdle for some folks. And then obviously doing like a full rotation is research something that's, I guess a lot of people would maybe wonder, is that expected or is it more just if you have like a publication or two, that's like a nice bonus or I guess, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's like, I was, I was told in med school, I think it rings true as they, a lot of the program directors just want to see that you have done some sort of research and are able to, you know, formulate a question and design a project to answer that question and then talk about your results. Um, I think in some ways having an ophthalmology specific research project is helpful just in the fact that it shows that you're committed to ophthalmology and it gives the interviewer something to talk to talk to you about that they feel knowledgeable about at the interview as well. But by no means is it necessary. And some of my interviews, um, even at some of like the top, the top programs that I interviewed at, they were more interested in my orthopedic research because that was the research I really did more of in med school and were kind of my projects, whereas the ophthalmology research was stuff that I had continued from undergrad or was stuff I kind of hopped on at the last second. Um, but they really wanted to hear about my research that I had designed the, you know, retrospective chart review and why we answered the question the way we did and how we, you know, why we published it the way we did. Um, so I think they really just want to see that you understand, you know, how to interpret research, how to um, perform research and kind of how to answer those questions. Interesting. Yeah, no, I imagine that's and just even from an experience wise, that's a much more valuable experience being able to, regardless of what area it is to design something yourself and see it through and, and, and learn what you got from it. 